it's my turn to go down. That's what Billy said as he pushed five-year-old me out of the way and sat down at the top of the twisty tube slide. Billy, or as the kids called him, Big Billy, was the textbook definition of a playground bully. I'd seen him at the playground tons of times. One of the older kids told me that he considered himself king of the place. The other kids always gave him hell for his actions, as they did when I was helped from my little stumble following Billy's shove. He didn't care though, and neither did his parents. Our boys will be boys and all that. Billy blew a raspberry at the older kids, telling him off before disappearing down the slide. They turned their attention to me, asking if I was hurt. I shook my head. It wasn't the first time I'd been a victim of Billy's wrath. I turned and stared down the wide opening of the slide. I could hear his boyish giggles bouncing off the plastic walls as he spiraled down. When it stopped suddenly, we all assumed it was because he'd reached the end and was on his way to have another go. When we checked the bottom though, he wasn't there. It wasn't a long slide, maybe a four or five second ride at the most. Billy failed to appear after 30 seconds of waiting. One of the kids summarized that he'd gotten stuck halfway through, but another one pointed out that he'd probably start crying if that happened, and the slide was completely silent. Hey Billy, one of them called out. You stuck in there? No answer. I started to crawl in through the bottom, but a hand on my shoulder from an older kid was enough to convince me that it wasn't a good idea. We just stood and stared at the slide, waiting to see if Billy ever came down. The eerie sound of no kids playing was enough to alert Billy's mother to the situation. She wasn't satisfied with her answer of the, in the slide, when she asked where her son was so she resorted to walking around the perimeter of the playground and calling his name. The other parents eventually took notice and called everyone away from the slide. I still remember how tightly my mother held me as she watched Billy's mom grow increasingly hysterical. It wasn't until she was in the middle of explaining the situation to the police that Billy plopped out under the soft mat at the end of the slide no worse for wear. The police examined the slide while Billy was squeezed by his crying mother. They couldn't find anything, and Billy didn't even seem to realise that he'd been gone at all. To be safe, they closed the playground for a week. The kids were upset, but the adults all breathed a collective sigh of relief. Billy seemed fine. He was still his obnoxious, aggressive self but his parents kept a closer eye on him that whole week. Even after the playground reopened, they were hesitant to let him go anywhere near that slide. Us kids were just as hesitant, but it was quickly squashed as we failed to reproduce the unusual event. It was just a normal slide. We didn't notice anything abnormal about Billy until he was finally allowed back at the playground. A girl with blonde pigtails and striped stockings was about to go down the slide when Billy approached. What are you doing? That's wrong. As expected, he pushed her out of the way and sat down before pushing himself down the slide again. We held our breath, but he reached the bottom in no time and rushed back up to meet us. See? Now you try. Everyone in the group said they didn't see how Billy's method was any different from how you're meant to go down a slide. He rolled his eyes and went down again. He asked us if we got it that time. And of course, we all shook our heads. He growled, muttering something about stupid heads, before sliding down once again. There! Now do you get it? We nodded half-heartedly. He still wasn't satisfied. 
If you're not going to slide the right way, then don't slide at all. The rest of the time he was at the playground, he stood at the top of the slide, making sure no one went down without his approval, which no one had. It wasn't until his mother told him it was time to leave that we were able to use it. Nothing seemed unusual about the slide, and going down the wrong way didn't have any negative effects. We all assumed Billy's behaviour was just part of his usual bossy self. From then on, every time Billy visited the playground, he parked himself in front of the slide, a watchful hawk, making sure no one got too close to its nest. He'd occasionally use the slide for its intended purpose, but most of the time, he was its gatekeeper. The grown-ups didn't find it odd, brushing it off as typical behaviour for a boy of that age. Of course, no boy stays that age for very long. We all got older, went to school, made friends, lost friends, and changed from the young children we once were. Billy, however, only changed a little bit. He grew taller, wider, and stronger, but he remained fixated on the playground slide and the proper sliding method. Even well into high school, when the rest of us were more focused on video games and house parties, Billy spent his free time at the playground. There were moments when I'd be walking home from school and I'd see him perched at the top of the slide, keeping a wary eye on the much younger kids happily running below. They rarely ever approached the slide, as if they knew the consequences for invading Billy's territory. Graduation came and went. We all went our separate ways, having lost nearly all interest in Billy's obsession. I had nearly forgotten about the whole thing by the time I turned 30. I went to college out of state, worked for a few years, then eventually came back home with a desire to join the local police force. The playground was still there, but Billy was not. Of course, I paid little attention to this fact, since Billy was nothing more than the remnants of a flicker in my memory. I was in the middle of a patrol with a veteran when we received the call. Public disturbance at the local park, units please respond. Without even blinking, my partner radioed back the 10-4 before starting the car and heading for the park. Not surprised, he said. A lot of weird crap goes down to that place. You're about the kid who disappeared down the slide. I simply nodded, and like that, the conversation was over. I'd seen the playground at night before, but something about it just seemed off this night in particular. I, nor my partner, could see the so-called disturbance. All we could make out was the colourful playground equipment bathed in an eerie moonlight, yet somehow still cast in a menacing shadow. As my eyes scanned the area, I could make out a huddled figure at the top of the slide. I knew who it was before I even put my light on him. Billy was still tall, but not as wide as he once was. His hair was unkempt, and his thick beard stuck out at all angles. His clothes were stained with sweat, and I could unfortunately smell him even from my current distance. He must have been there for a while, squatting at the playground, carrying out the duty he set out for himself as a child. He squinted at me, shielding his eyes from my light. Do you want to go down the slide? I shook my head. No, Billy. You need to come down, though. It's time for you to go home. You have to do it the right way, he replied, not moving. You can't go down if you can't do it the right way. You have to come down, Billy, I insisted. Don't make us come up there and get you, my partner added. Billy slowly stood staring down the dark opening of the slide he so loyally guarded. 
You can't go down the wrong way. I went down the wrong way. But they taught me the right way. You have to do it the right way. They don't like it when you do it wrong. Bonafide nut job, my partner muttered, before shouting at Billy again. We're not going to ask you again, sir. Please remove yourself from the playground. Billy sat down, as if he hadn't even heard us. He breathed slowly, gazing longingly into the dark abyss before him. I'll show you. In an instant, Billy vanished down the slide once again. We rushed to the end, expecting him to land on the soft playmat as he had all those years ago. We waited. 10 seconds, 15, 20, 45. My partner shined his light at the slide, only to be met with a blue plastic and no Billy. I didn't stop him from crawling in and making his way to the top. Still, no Billy. Where the hell did he go? I had no answer. I could only think back to the days of my childhood, when Billy first vanished into thin air because of the slide. He said you had to do it the right way, that they didn't like it when it was done the wrong way. I still wonder which way it was that made him disappear.